for you some, some extra tips on how to deal with clients, customers over the video. And I call it Zoom tips, but these tips you could be using for, for Microsoft Teams, whatever it is that you're using. And I've got seven for you. Now these are new ones, these are not the old stuff. You've got LinkedIn, everybody's gonna give you tips about using video, because everyone's a blooming expert, aren't they? Or they think they are, aren't they? But they're not. These are seven you may not come across. The first one is if you're doing a, a group meeting, say for example, say for example you're doing a, um, a team meeting with, with, with some colleagues or something, or you're doing an association meeting or something like that, and then you want to introduce everybody. One thing I like to do is what I call the one word check-in. You know, the one word check-in. And I ask everybody to think of one word that describes how they're feeling. And that's really hard to do. So it could be excited, it could be um, uh, nervous, worried, whatever the word is. Because you've got to get into people's state of mind before you do any connection with humans. You've got to get into their state of mind. So it's a lovely little intro to do if there's a group of you doing that as well. Um, a lot of people don't know this one, but of course when you uh, are on Zoom calls, particularly if it's a team of people, you might want to use the mute function, particularly if you've got a loud dog in the background or you've got your, your child is coming up moaning at you or whatever it is. When's tea, mum? You know, that kind of stuff. So you need to be able to quickly mute and the space bar does that. Not a lot of people know that, particularly on Zoom, if you hit the space bar, it will automatically mute you. So it's a, rather than, let's get my mouse and figure out where this thing is and click on it. Space bar, nice little tip there for you, I hope you like that one as well. Um, you've got to think about um, your state of mind, haven't you, on these things. You've got to match people's state of mind. Now I call this matching and mirroring, and we talk about that a lot when you're dealing with clients on a one-to-one. -one. But if you can get their state of mind, try and match it uh, to, you know, to build that connection. That's the key one as well. Um, the other thing, and this is not, not new really, is to slow right down. It's been proven that when you're on video, you need to slow right down. More than normal, normal face-to-face, -face, more than on the telephone, oddly enough. Although a lot of people on the telephone are too quick anyway. Think about it, you haven't got that face-to-face, -face, that, that bodily connection, that chemistry between two people who are face-to-face, belly-button-to-belly-button, eyeball-to-eyeball. Yes, you've got a video screen, I get that totally. And you may have you know, large monitors in your office where you can see people. I mean, down there, for example, I've got five banks of monitors, big 24-inch monitors, so I can see whole people's faces on a whole screen. But if you're working on a laptop, you might not see that because you haven't got this non-verbal communication, which we use to pick stuff up. So when you're talking to somebody, you're, you're watching their face, you're watching their, their, their expressions and all those things, and that helps you to communicate, which means you can talk a bit quicker. But you need to slow right down when on video and pause a whole lot more than you would normally do. And here's a nice one for you, and I call this crystal nose, you know, crystal nose. Not nose as in your face, but nose as in knowledge. Crystal as in the, um, well, the crystal, the, the rock. Crystal nose. It's a website, it's an app, really cool. What it does is you sign up for it, it's only a small payment, and it connects to all of your um, email, um, social media, CRM systems. And when you're um, in touch with a client via email, typically, or live chat or whatever it is, it will go and um, search the internet it will start scraping the internet to find out about the person that you're talking to and it will assess their personality and it will tell you how to handle them. Really clever stuff. It uses um, the DISC profile, very similar to the SDI, which I use a lot. These are like personality inventories, aren't they? Which you, know, you colour people and stuff like that. They're really good if, 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 if you, you, know, you work on it really well. But what this crystal does, Say, for example, I was um, emailing a guy called Imran Khan, for example, and I was e e emailing Imran, and um, he lives over in Birmingham, and we were chatting about this, that, and the other. As soon as I start connecting to Imran, and it's got his email address, it will go off to the internet, it will go off to social media, start scraping it to find out what, what kind of personality he is. And it'll come up with a little message. So Imran is a detailed person. Make sure that you give him the extra logical detail why, why he needs to take up this product. Very clever. So when you're talking to him on Zoom, you know a bit about his personality. It's artificial intelligence. It's really clever stuff, don't you? I love that one. Um, a couple other tips for you. This is one of my favorite one, actually. I really like this one. Is get a set. Let's squeeze this one over here for you. Get a set going. Now, I, I love movies. 
I love films. Um, I, I love Hollywood, all that kind of stuff. And cowboys and, and Indians are one of my favourites. And I was watching old Lauren Hardy, 1930s comedy. It was very funny. It was a clip and it was um, where Lauren Hardy are in their car with their wives and they're waving goodbye to, to the people at the, 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 the house. And the person at the house is waving goodbye. And everyone's waving goodbye. And they keep waving goodbye for about half an hour. Because on Zoom calls, of course, when you, when you finish a Zoom call, everybody waves goodbye, don't they? They take forever to wave goodbye. Anyway, on this uh, Lauren Hardy um, film, there was a set. It was Hollywood. It was basic set. So they, they had a plastic house. And when the set had finished, they took the house down. The, the cars in the set were probably plastic as well. Now, you need to have a set at home, where you're based probably at the moment, maybe in the future when you go back to your office and you're doing your Zoom calls, your Skype calls, your, your Teams calls. It may be in a spare bedroom, it might be in your study, it might be in a landing, at the corner of your landing, but you need to create your set, your film set. So think about your background. Think about um, the lighting. Think about um, the wallpaper. Think about what you wear. Think about everything else. It's your set so that when you go online, you start talking to somebody, it looks fairly professional behind you. We've got away in the last couple of weeks with um, you know, your, your, your unmade up bed behind you and your wardrobe with your clothes hanging off it. You kind of got away with that. Or the ubiquitous bookshelf. If I see another bookshelf, I'm going to scream the bookshelf behind people because they just think it looks, it looks intelligent. They show them the bookshelf. Now, think of a set that you can have. Even if you're in the corner of a landing where you've only got like four foot by three foot and that's where your table is and you've got your laptop on, on a couple of boxes so you've got eye contact with the client. What's behind you? Make sure you've got it all in your own little set, set up ready. I like that little tip as well. Last one for you. I think I've got, um, I've got um, five here, haven't I? I, I promise you seven. So you've got one more for you. But um, one more for you is to predict problems. Predict problems is one for you, because um, there will be problems, things will happen. Predict them, practice them. So um, for example, if, um, if you get um, Zoom bombed, <laughs> what are you gonna do if you get Zoom bombed? Um, hopefully I, I'm organizing my security, so I'm not, but if I do, um, I go straight to end meeting, just like that. Bang, shout I do, end meeting, uh, which, which is easy to do, because there's a red button at the bottom. That's my practice. If um, your Wi-Fi goes down, what's your practice? If, so, if you lose your video, what are you going to do? What, what's, you need to practice problems that will occur on Zoom, and that'll help you to overcome them. It's a bit like role-playing objection handling, isn't it? If you're dealing with customers, and the customer poses a problem to you, your, your role-play objection handling is, is what, what we've always done. So that's a little tip for you. By the way, the seventh tip was to match your state of mind. Let's put that one over here for you. We talked about um, the, the one-word check-in. And it's to match the state of mind. And I think that's important, that one, because once you've checked in with people, you can match voice and pace and all those things if you want to. But get their state of mind, the customer, the person you're dealing with. Are they excitable? Are they nervous? Are they worried? Are they uncertain? Whatever it is. And match that to a degree. If, you, if you're full of Duracell batteries and you're bouncing around all over the place and the client's not, then that's not matching, is it? You need to match them. That's the... Um, the psychology tips there for you. Uh, hope you found it useful.